Hi students, welcome to Year 11 Biology and Cells as the Basis of Life. This is uh, an extension really to video number six where we were looking at the relationship between cell organelles and technology. And in this video, I just want to kind of summarize some of the key information about cell organelles so we have a bit of an understanding of the structure and function of these very important components of cells. So following on from before, um, this still is about trying to um, look at a comparison and a contrast in terms of the cell organelles and the arrangements in different types of cells, both prokaryotic and eukaryotic. But really, this one's more about trying to get an understanding of what each component in the cell looks like and what it does. So we've had a look at a few of these different types of structures before, and the key things then, I guess, are just to firstly define what an organelle is and, and really any tiny structure in a cell with a specialized function um, is is pretty much an organelle. Now often we talk about uh, membrane bound organelles and there's certainly a number of those uh, that we find little structures within cells that are contained within their own membrane such as a nucleus or a plastid like a chloroplast or a mitochondria. Um, but there are other structures within cells as well that are that are um, smaller obviously than the cell but carry out a particular function so we're going to look at some of those uh, in this video and hopefully uh, we'll tabulate those in a way that'll help you order and identify each of these different types of organelles because there are a number of different types so firstly um, cells that are eukaryotic will have a nucleus uh, the nucleus will also have a nuclear membrane and often a nucleolus, as well as a nuclear pore. Um, and you can kind of see some of the little pores here. And like all membranes, they are selectively permeable. They will allow material to move in and out of the cell. So membranes, we've kind of described them up to this point as a bag, but they're more, they're more than that. Um, they're actually regulators, so they allow uh, the passage of certain materials inside and outside of the um, contents that they are containing, uh, sometimes because things have been produced within that need to be distributed outside, and other times things that are produced on the outside need to be brought in. So these are the specific functions of membranes. Nu the nucleus is a spherical shape, and the most important thing is it is the container of genetic material, chromosomes, the DNA that we find within the nucleus of eukaryotic cells. The mitochondria is probably the next one. It's very important. Um, it's kind of cigar shaped. We've got it in a sort of overall representation there. You can see it's uh, quite complex. We might have a look at mitochondria in a little bit more detail um, as we progress through this course because they are the site of aerobic respiration and respiration is such a critical process uh, for producing energy for the cell. And it's this energy that uh, is used to power a large number of uh, chemical reactions. And it, it, um, it occurs in the form of adenosine triphosphate or ATP. Um, and it's the uh, mitochondria that is the uh, site for that uh, ATP generation within the cell. I have talked about endoplasmic reticulum before and the fact that there are two types and the one that I've, I've identified here is smooth and the one below is rough and, it's, and the rough endoplasmic reticulum is the one that's associated with these little tiny ribosomes uh, on the edges. The endoplasmic reticulum is a continuous membrane system and often it, it can link to both the nuclear membrane and the plasma or cell membrane. Uh, and this is, a, this is a great transport site, allowing the passage of materials from one part of the cell to another through this continuous system. It also enables us to identify another really important bio biological concept, which is the relationship between surface area and volume. Uh, with a lot of these structures, uh, we want high levels of exchange, and the best way to get high levels of exchange is to have a very large surface area compared to volume. Uh, and these sorts of membranes allow that massive increase in surface area, which means you get a much greater rate of exchange um, than if you used other sort of shapes or sizes. 
The ribosomes themselves we have talked about as being a common structure that we see in a large number of different types of cells, both prokaryotic and eukaryotic. Um, no membrane for the ribosome. They're just small granules, but they are the site of protein synthesis. And we've talked about the fact that enzymes are one specialized type of protein, but there are many other types as well that are made in the ribosomes. The Golgi apparatus are flattened membrane-bound sacs, and um, they also have little vesicles associated with them, or Golgi bodies, they're sometimes called, and they store, package, and secrete a range of different cell products, um, often oils um, and fats and those sorts of things as well. So um, Golgi apparatus are also uh, associated with the production of lysosomes, and they are something that we'll look at in the next slide. So you can see here lysosomes almost budding off the edge of the Golgi apparatus. And these are also membrane brown structures and they're really the, um, the cleaners of the cell. They contain digestive enzymes and they digest any of the chemicals that the cell isn't using anymore including being there when the cell itself uh, is is done. They digest any worn out organelles, um, so anything that needs to be replaced, it's the lysosomes that really will go around and clean up um, all of those unwanted chemicals. Centrosomes are another important organelle. Um, these consist of two tiny rod-shaped bodies called the centrioles. These aren't really important until the process of mitosis in which the cell will divide and it forms a spindle and that's where these will move to opposite ends and uh, so effectively two poles and create a spindle in the middle and then the uh, chromosomes will line up and we will look at the processes of both mitosis and meiosis uh, a little bit later in this course but it's the centrioles and the centrosome that are very important in the formation of that spindle and that um, that very important component of cell division. Uh, chloroplasts are a particular type of plastid and plastids are structures within cells that often contain pigments. Um, you know that chloroplasts contain the pigment chlorophyll. And the chloroplasts are quite complex structures. Um, they contain a little stacks of grana and uh, they also contain a thylakoid membrane. And uh, when we go into the process of photosynthesis, because they are the site of photosynthesis, we'll see that there's actually different parts of the process of photosynthesis, and they take place in different parts of the chloroplasts. And there's some very ingenious chemical ways for allowing the passage of materials from one part of the chloroplast to another as these processes are occurring. Um, so quite complex little organelles, the chloroplasts. And the last ones to talk about are vacuoles. Now vacuoles tend to be very small and or temporary in animals, uh, but they're, they're large and permanent structures that we see in plant cells. There are a couple of different types. There are vacuoles that are used primarily for storage of water or minerals, sometimes organic uh, materials or pigments can also be stored in the vacuoles. But they also, for some freshwater organisms, can be uh, of this type, contractile vacuoles, and they actually can be used to expel water um, and wastes um, from the cell um, as they as the little vacuoles contract and squeeze if you like which will release some contents from the cell so this is just a quick overview of some of the key cellular organelles and I think it's worth definitely having a look at um, each of these make sure you're familiar with the structure and the function remember those two key relationship words that we have in biology what is the structure what is the function and how does the structure help facilitate the function? And often with a lot of these structures, it really is about increasing that um, surface area. And that's something that we will definitely be going into in future videos. Thanks for watching.